is this idea that force is a vector. Force is a vector, and therefore Coulomb's law, we have to worry about adding those forces as vectors. F equals K, Q1, Q2, all over R squared, and then there is this direction associated with it. So let's try an example, and let's see if we can make maybe a simpler example than we had talked about earlier. Let's do the following. Let's say we draw a coordinate system here, x and y, and let's do this. Let's put a charge, q, right there. We'll put another charge, q, right there, and then we'll put a third charge out here, equal distance away. And let's see if we can find the force on this charge due to the other two. Okay, very straightforward vector problem. Now let's give some dimensions here. We'll say that this distance here is L, and we will call that distance L and that distance L. So everything is L away from the origin. And now let's figure out what the force is on this little guy out here. Okay, we wrote down the force law, but what we had in there was an n hat. And the n hat says the direction is along the line between the two charges. So if this is the line, then the force on this guy has to be in that direction. We'll call that F1. The other guy, is coming up like that, and so the force from it has to be along that line, F2. Let's just pretend they're all positive charges, okay? Three Qs, all of them greater than zero. All right, so now we just have to add up F1 and F2, and you know what's gonna happen. They're gonna add up to some F3 that is off in that direction. Okay, let's see if we can calculate what F3 is. All right, first off, let's take a look at, how about F2? F2 is the following. It is K, Q, Q over R squared. And then there's gonna be some direction associated with it, okay? And we're not exactly sure how to write the direction yet, so let's make this the magnitude of F2, okay? That's what the magnitude of F2 is. It's K Q Q over R squared. F3 is, of course, going to have the exact same magnitude. And that R squared is what? It's this. That's our R, but this is a right triangle. So R squared is in fact L squared plus L squared, which is two L squared. And the same on F3, K Q Q over two L squared. All right, so those are the strengths of the two forces due to those guys. Okay, we're looking at the force on this one right here. But now we have to worry about the direction. Okay, let's think about the direction here. F2 is going up like that. And F2 therefore has some component in that direction and some component in that direction. And the components are the following. The horizontal is F2 cosine theta. The vertical is F2 sine theta. And likewise for F3, we're gonna get something similar. F3 is just, or I'm sorry, F1 is just going down. 
And so for the two sides of that triangle, we would get F1 cosine theta and F1 sine theta. All right, and we know what theta is, right? If this is L and that's L, then we know that that's 45 degrees right there. That has to also be 45 degrees. And so now we're almost there because we have the magnitude. We're almost done with the direction, and we can figure out how to add this up. Okay, F2 as a vector is what? It is the magnitude of F2 cosine theta in the x direction, which we call i hat, plus F2 sine theta in the y direction, which we call j hat. And we know exactly what F2 is. It's kqq over 2l squared. And then we have cosine of theta i hat plus kqq over 2l squared times sine theta j hat. F3, uh, sorry, F1, F1, which we said is pointing down at an angle, that's going to be kqq over 2l squared cosine theta i hat. And then we have a sign on the other one, but it's pointing down, and so we need a minus sign. Minus kqq over 2l squared sine theta j hat. And now what we're looking for is F3. F3 is equal to F1 plus F2. Well, here's F2. Here's F1. So F3 is F2 plus F1. And look what happens. If I add these up, these two are the same. These two are equal and opposite. And so the sign components, in fact, drop out entirely. And we just end up with this. And since we have two of them, we can double it. KQQ over L squared, the two in the bottom goes away. Cosine theta. And the direction here is I hat. Okay. And if you want the magnitude of F3, then it's just the stuff that's out in front. Now, in our example, we picked L and L, and so we also know that theta is going to be 45 degrees here, and 45 degrees, cosine of 45 degrees, gets us a root 2 in the denominator. F3, that's your remaining force. It's this, kqq over root 2l squared, and it's in the x direction, i hat. If you want to calculate the magnitude of it, it's just that stuff out in front. Okay? So you kind of knew the answer, right? You knew that F3 had to be pointing to the right because those other two factors were going to cancel in the vertical direction, and they would contribute in the x direction, in the horizontal direction. All right, questions about this stuff? Feeling okay with it? All right.